Good morning. I hope you are well and doing okay. As we are at the 30th of August, summer is almost over. How crazy is that? I don't know about you, but I feel like schedules and rhythms have gone completely out the window. With kids being off school since March, I kind of feel like we haven't even had a summer break. But it's almost September. It's almost time to get back to normal. Um, but this year has been a crazy year, hasn't it? Over the last six to seven months, the world has faced unprecedented times. That's the, what you hear in the news all the time. And um, we've really been thrown out of our comfort zone, haven't we? The world has never faced something like this in the majority of our current population's lifeline, the coronavirus. But as human beings, we like comfort, don't we? I know this is something that I have come to enjoy very much on a personal level. Now, if you ask my wife, what would my dress sense be? She would say one word comfortable. See, I like to be comfortable. I like having clothes that fit me and make me feel relaxed. I don't like them to be too tight or too loose. I don't like to feel too hot or too cold. I recently even got to the point where I would take a spare change of clothes in case the weather changed because I like to be that comfortable. Now, I know it might seem trivial, this is something that during lockdown that God has been challenging me on because I got so used to wanting to just be comfortable. But we can start with our clothes. This can move into many different areas of our life, can't it? Think about it. We often find comfort in our favourite food choices, sticking to what we know rather than maybe trying something that's a bit healthier. Maybe it's a job that we are doing that we find is comfortable. They pay us well, we're kind of happy, maybe not happy that you just do it because you're comfortable. Um, and everything is okay. You don't want to upset things. What if it's with our children? Our kids are okay. I'll take them out maybe once a week or so, but um, I'm not going to really overbear them too much. I'm not going to focus too much on it. We don't want to talk about the hard topics or thoughts because that would make us uncomfortable and we don't want to cause that. Maybe it's our friendships. In a similar way with our children, we are comfortable with them. Maybe when they say something that doesn't sit right with us, we just say, oh, that's just Karen being Karen. Or typical Mark making that comment. We don't want to disrupt or change or challenge the status quo. We are happy to stay comfortable. See, the scriptures, the Bible is so full of stories about God's many suffering servants. But they all point themselves to the beautiful story of our Saviour, said in Isaiah 52. See, God's own Son stepped away from his eternal glory, living a perfectly righteous life in human form, so that he could gift that righteousness to wicked sinners. And two, the sins of those wicked men upon himself and uh, sorry, the sins of those wicked men he put upon himself and allow God's wrath to crush himself instead of us. Christ suffered more intensely than any person ever has or ever will. And he did all of this according to the will of his Father. And in Isaiah 53 verse 10. God calls Jesus to the ultimate discomfort so that we, undeserving reciprocants of his mercy, could escape eternal discomfort. So this means we're off the hook, right? The Lord lets, let lots of old covenant folks into uncomfortable situations, but those of us who receive the pardoning efforts and benefits of Christ under the new covenant don't have to worry about him calling us to discomfort, do we? Jesus paid the price, bringing us peace. The ferocious fatherly love of God has been irrevocably unleashed on us in the gospel. So, it logically follows that life should be smooth sailing from here on out, doesn't it? See, some would suppose this to be the case. However, God doesn't call Christ followers to cloud floating as much as he calls us to cross carrying. In Luke 9 verse 23, says this, and he said to all, if anyone would come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross daily and follow 
me. Christ commands us to embrace the difficulty and discomfort that accompany a flesh-denying, kingdom-proclaiming life. So how does this look for us today? What does this mean for us in today? In Genesis 12, we hear the famous story of Abraham, where God says this in verse 1, And the Lord said to Abraham, Go from your country, your people, and your father's household to the land I will show you. God speaks to Abraham to go, to leave all that he knows, and to go. Talk about moving into the unknown. To truly understand the magnitude of what God has told Abraham to do, you should realise that during this time in history, and in this part of the world, families didn't split up. Kids did not move away from home. Families were clans and tribes of multiple families, all living and working together. A city or a village simply was a few interconnected families that stuck together. Why? Because it was literally the only way to survive at this time. So when God told Abraham to get out of his country and leave his family, it was no small matter. Why did God want to do this? Why did God want Abraham to go? We find the answers in verse 2 and 3. I will make you into a great nation, and I will bless you. I will make your name great, and you will be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you, and whoever curses you, I will curse. And all the people on earth will be blessed through you. See, there are spiritual and practical things that God wants to, who wanted to achieve through Abraham. However, in order to do this, he had to get out of his comfort zone. How many of you have a special place in your home? Your own little corner of comfort in your house where you like to go and wind down? Maybe it's an armchair or a seat in the garden. Maybe it's your bed or a sofa. Anywhere, somewhere in your house. Most people have a little place that is comfortable. See, these places of comfort are great and they are needed. You need it for rest and relaxation. But when you sit in them, you are confined to them. If you spent all day in those spots, do you think you'd end up doing much with what you have to do that day? No, not at all. You're confined to your space, to your area, and therefore this limits what you can do whilst in it. If you stayed in that comfortable spot all day, would you be able to, say, climb a mountain from it? Of course not. It's not possible to do so without getting up and out of the comfortable place. See, comfort confines us. It keeps things small and happy, but never satisfied. If Abraham decided to stay, to stay home in his village where he was comfortable, would he have been able to experience all of the works that God did through him that changed the world? The answer is no, he would not. But what does he actually do? We read in verse 4, So Abram went, as the Lord had told him, and Lot went with him. Abram was 75 years old when he set out from Haran. He took his wife Sarai, his nephew Lot, all their possessions they had accumulated, and the people they had acquired in Haran. And they set out for the land of Canaan, and they arrived there. See, if Abraham had doubts, or if he argued with God, it isn't recorded here. If we take these scriptures at face value, then we see that Abraham simply obeyed. See, comfort confines us. It's one of the biggest things that can stop us from doing what God has called us to do here on this earth. Comfort is one of the biggest areas that can lead to you missing out on all that God wants to do in and through your life here on earth. See, God calls us to pick up our cross and follow him, as it says in Luke 9.23. It is no coincidence that this phrase should bring about the ideas of being uncomfortable. Think about it for a second. Could you imagine if you had to physically carry a cross all day, every day, on your back? Imagine if it was the first thing that you strapped on and carried, like this, on your back all the time. 
But that is exactly what God is calling us to do. Maybe not literally, but figuratively, to get out of our comfort zone and follow him. So what does this look like for us? How do we do that each day? How are we meant to just follow God and listen and find out what we are meant to do here on this earth? We're going to talk about that a bit later on.